What's up, everybody? Welcome to The Revival. My name is JJ. Welcome to part two of my Game Boy and Game Boy Color collection. So let's get started. Um, first up, yeah, we can do both these at the same time. So this is Roland's Curse one, and well, just Roland's Curse, and then Roland's Curse two. Um, so what I'll do sometimes if I, you know, I'll just kind of if I'm how to phrase this. If there's a system that I haven't bought anything for in a while. And I'm like, you know, I wonder if there's maybe some RPGs or something that I missed uh, on a system that I would be easy and cheap to get and, and, you know, whatever. Why not? Let's take a look and see. So I'll go on on the internet and I'll just Google, you know, like, in this case what I did was Game Boy RPGs. And I just looked for any Game Boy RPGs that there were. And two of the games, well, one of the games I pulled was Roland's Curse. I found out later on there was a sequel. Uh, but Roland's Curse pulled up and I was like... Oh, interesting. And I looked at some screenshots. It kind of looked like a like a Zelda esque, um, and you're going screen to screen and, and moving through. And if I remember correctly, there are like experience points and leveling up, so it's RPG ish. Um, but it's also very short. I think it took me like one to two hours to beat, uh, and that's also what made me pull the trigger on it because it was cheap. And when I found out how short it was, I was like, oh, sure, yeah, I'll knock, knock another RPG off the backlog. Why not? And I had, I had fun with it, it was alright. Um, and then I found out there was a sequel, which I had not played, Roland's Curse 2. Uh, but, Roland's Curse 1 was, you know, a lot of fun, and it's it's super, super cheap. At least it was when I got it, and that was, I don't know, maybe like two, three years ago? I can't imagine it's gone up much. It's, it's not like a super well-known game, at least from what I understand. Um, I had never heard of it until I did that search, so. Uh, but I'm curious to see how Roland's Curse 2 is. Um, so at some point I will get to that because, you know, I, I did enjoy my time with this one. So, uh, yeah, first two there. Next is a game that, man, I played the hell out of. This was one of the games that did get lost in the mail that I mentioned in the last video. Um, about, uh, that, that got lost in the mail when my mom sent those games over to seize to my cousin. And this is one that I was pretty upset about and I wanted to recoup as soon as possible so I did get it. Uh, now I actually have two copies, funny enough. Um, and that's RC Super RC Pro-Am. It's fun on the Nintendo, but my memories with this game came from the Game Boy. I played this so much on there. Um, it's literally, you're just racing around a track and for some reason, I don't know, I just got really good at the controls and because it's one of those where the car kind of like slips and slides and stuff. and. Um, I really, really just loved the mechanics and the feel of how it drove. I don't, I can't explain. <laughs> you just have to play it for yourself. Um, but it's a really, really fun little time killer. Um, and I mean, honestly, like looking at it right now, it makes me kind of want to like, after I'm done with this, I might just fire up the Game Boy and play a little bit just because I have so much fun with this game. Um, yeah, so I, I highly recommend this. Like I said, it's on NES as well. So if you have the chance to try it out ever, Again, it's one of those where you're not going to have a super deep gameplay experience, but you're going to have some fun just jumping in there and, and driving around and, and, you know, having a good time with it. So definitely, definitely recommend this for anybody just, you know, looking for a fun game. And it's not, from what I understand, it's not expensive or hard to find or anything either, so. Uh, next, a game that I played quite a bit, but again, it's Jurassic Park. <laughs> Um, the problem is, is that I should go back to this and play it again. So, I don't know if any of you have ever, ever played Alien 3 on Super Nintendo. This is like a top-down version of that, where, if I remember correctly, you're like, you go to terminals and stuff, and you figure out missions that you're supposed to do, and you do those missions while going on this giant map. Alien 3 is side-scrolling, it's like Metroidvania. Um, 
but then you're completing the missions one by one to, to you know, progress. In both cases, where the gameplay is, you know, similar like that, I think that's how this is, I'm pretty sure. Um, in both cases, I never really, it's just because I was so young, and again, I'm not the smartest guy in the world, but I just remember just running around, just shooting stuff, and exploring, and fighting, and that was it. Not really making any progress. I didn't understand the mission system. I didn't know that that's what I was supposed to be doing. Every now and then something would get completed and I'd be like, oh, something happened. Cool, I guess. I don't know what that means. And that's how, what I remember from this is that there were objectives and stuff, but I could never find anything. and I could never figure out where to go or what to do. So I just ended up wandering around aimlessly shooting dinosaurs and trying to find weapon ammo. And yeah, um, I but I had fun with it. I definitely had fun with it. And I, I you know... It's one that I should go back to now that I'm I'm a little bit smarter, a little bit. Uh, but I think now I could now at least have the internet if I need, have any questions. Um, but I, like I said, I remember having fun with it. So I think going back to it now would be interesting to see uh, how I approach it and, and what I do. Because um, it's not a bad game from what I remember. It's been a while. It's been a long time. Um... Do this one first. Um, so, yeah, Dragon Warrior 1 and 2. I This was before I got the NES version of Dragon Warrior. Um, this is how I played it. Um, this is how I finally finished it as well, uh, both 1 and 2. Uh, the fact that I found this in a box just with both games in there, I was like, oh, shoot, I want to play the Dragon Quest series at some point. I'm getting this. So I picked it up. It has both games on it. It wasn't until years later that I played it, uh, but I, man, I am, <sighs> I don't think I'm kicking myself for not having played the Dragon Quest games earlier, mainly because they're tough. Like the Final Fantasy games, it's pretty cut and dry and, and pretty obvious what it is you need to do. They pretty much give you really good directions and, and tell you where to go, and it guides you very well from point A to point B. These games, especially the early ones in the series, and even, even you know, where I'm at, I just finished 7. There's really not, like, a super clear path on what you're supposed to do. There are some games that are much clearer than others, but, man, I I just don't know that I would have been able to... You know, I would have ended up just like how I was with Jurassic Park, where I'm just wandering around aimlessly, not really sure what to do and where to go. So, now that I'm able to, you know, come and look up answers online if I need to, or, uh, you know, think a little bit more critically and that kind of thing. Um, I, I think it's much better received for me to be able to play this nowadays. Um, and I, I enjoyed it. I had fun with it. Um, so I think, and I also really like that I'm playing through it in order because I'm seeing that progression from one game to the next and it's a blast. So, but I really, really enjoyed both of these. Uh, and quite frankly, it just, each game kept getting better. Like one was great. Then I really liked two better than one. And then I liked three better than two. Um, Dragon Warrior 3 was also, you know, same kind of deal. The only thing is that I didn't have the box, obviously, but I saw it. And I had known that it was out on the Game Boy, but I hadn't seen it out in a while. Um, and I think I finally saw it. Um, I want to say at a game store out in Lawrence, Kansas, uh, called Game Nut. And it, I love that place, by the way. Shout out to Game Nut, because that place is awesome. Uh, it, it's, it was just such a... I really, really liked having all of these on the Game Boy because they're so grindy and being able to just sit there and grind levels while you're watching TV or something like that is a blessing with this stuff. Um, had I waited a little longer, I probably could have just played them on the Switch, which would have been cool as well. Um, but honestly, these these are really, really great versions as well. So more than serviceable and I had a fun time with them. So, um, And also because I enjoyed Pokemon so much and I knew that Dragon Quest was a... Uh, role-playing series, I decided to, at one point, pick up Dragon Warrior Monsters. I think I actually saw this in a Nintendo Power issue, and I was like, oh, that sounds kind of like Pokemon. Okay, maybe that'll give me my fix, you know, since we don't have a new Pokemon out right now. Um, and I remember getting into it, uh, I never finished it, um, but I... It was always really tough, like, I would, I would definitely need a guide, because if I remember correctly, I, I think you... I think there comes a point where you can't, like in Pokemon, you can just store whatever you're not using and then use the rest of them 
and then switch them out and, and that kind of thing. Whereas if I remember correctly, at least if you can in this, I never figured out how to. I think you can only have your party and then if you recruit somebody new, you have to replace them. Uh, you have to replace somebody in your existing party with them, um, which is unfortunate. So I think that's what kind of turned me off. So if there is a way to do that, then let me know because then I would probably go back to this because I really enjoyed it otherwise. The box is in really good condition too and I really, really like the box art. Um, so, but I, I mean, overall, I, I do remember having some fun with this, uh, but it just, you know, it wasn't Pokemon and the fact that I was like, I'd get attached to a monster and then be like, well, I really like him, but he's my weakest one, so I guess I gotta just drop him now. You know, it was just kind of heartbreaking at times. Um, I get attached to video game characters, so, sorry. Um, but yeah, so, I do, I do recommend that one. Uh, oh man. <sighs> Harvest Moon. This is my first experience with Harvest Moon. I think I talked about this when I did my boxed Game Boy Collection video. Man, I played this so much. Um, I I think this would probably be number two next to uh, Pokemon Blue. Um, because that I would sit down and play for long stretches of time. This I could play for like 10 minutes a day. You know, get some, some stuff done and, and whatnot. But it's... Man, I, I remember seeing a spread in Nintendo Power. I remember hearing about Harvest Moon, first of all, on the Super Nintendo. Never being able to find it, never seeing it out in the wild. But I always wanted to try it, because I was like, oh, Farming Sim, that sounds kind of neat. And I read about it, and I liked the art style and, and how it looked and everything. But I could never find it. Um, still don't have it to this day. And that's when I saw they were making a Game Boy version. And I read that article in Nintendo Power so many times. I'll have to go back and try to find it, because I, I'm i sure it'll you know give me all the feelies. Um, because it gave strategies on like, hey, grow this at this point in the year, and then sell it at this point in the year. Uh, if you grow these instead of these right here, these will sell for more. But if you wait, these will sell for more, and you know you can grow more of these. And you like, I was strategizing which animals to get first, and what parts of my field I wanted to utilize, how I wanted to lay out my crops, all before I even got this game. I was so into it before I even got it, and then when I got it, man, I just sat there and just loved doing this daily thing where I would just go in and do my, you know, my chores and, and plant my crops and, and all this stuff. And man, I just, I just really, really enjoyed it. Um, and again, it's another one just, I mean, just looking at the box just brings back so many, so many nostalgic feelings. I, I absolutely adore it. Um, so yeah, I, I, I mean, the Harvest Moon games and, you know, you've got so many farming sims that are out nowadays. Um, so it's like, I mean, Stardew Valley, obviously, is the big one that everybody knows. But it's, there's so many better games out now. But this is where it all started for me when it came to those kinds of games. Not that I'm huge into them at all, but I'm surprised I'm not considering how into it I was with this. Um, I just really, really loved this game at the time. Um, so, it, yeah. Harvest Moon. GB. Uh, next one is a game that I want to go back to and finish. And that is Lufia, The Legend Returns. Um, you had nine party members. Uh, it, yeah, it's, yeah. Um, it's RPG, obviously, um, and it's a Lufia game. I don't know if you've played any of the Super Nintendo Lufias. It's not as good as those, not by any means. And it's, if I remember correctly, it's very, very boilerplate. There's not, like, a lot of depth to it. The story isn't super amazing, um... But the gameplay was fun, and, you know, like I said, having nine party members all at the same time was, was kind of neat and stuff. Um, and it's just, I, I honestly don't even know why I stopped playing. Um, I think... I don't know, this says 12 playable characters. Jeez, okay, well, maybe it's 12. Um, I want to say that it's like, instead of a world map and you're exploring and going town to town and stuff like that, I think it's just one giant cave or something that you're going level to level. And you're just going deeper and deeper into it. That may have been what turned me off, um, but I still remember liking it. So it's it's something that I definitely will want to go back to at some point. Um, and I'm really glad I saw the box for it as well. It's not, not the best looking box art. The characters are really, really ugly looking. Um, but, you know, the back of the box is neat. Um, I'm just, I'm glad I have the box for it anyways. Uh, so, yeah, kind of cool. And there's obviously not 
a ton of RPGs for the Game Boy. Um, so, you know, I'm happy to have that. Uh, speaking of RPGs, if you can't tell from... Oh, no, those are all white, so it doesn't matter. Um, we've got Final Fantasy Adventure, Legend, Legend 2, and Legend 3. Great games. Let's just start from the beginning. <laughs> According to style right there. Final Fantasy Adventure. I have not finished it. I have come very close. This is the first game that I ever had to call in the Nintendo Power hotline for. Actually, it's like one of two. I didn't, it's not like I call it all the time. Called it for once on this, and then I think once for Final Fantasy VI, uh, trying to recruit all the characters in the world of Ruin. Um, anyways. Uh... I really want to finish this at some point. I'll probably do it on the Switch uh, with the new version that came out. Um, and, well, new version, it's the original, but it's on the Switch uh, in the collection. So, because um, this is originally supposed to be a mana game, but they called it Final Fantasy Adventure. My guess is to sell more, because it says Final Fantasy in the title. Uh, but it's a really fun game, very Zelda-esque, uh, but you get experience points, level up, that kind of thing. Um, so definitely, uh, definitely worth checking out if you haven't played it yet. If you get First of all, just get the Secret of Mana or the Mana Collection on um, the Switch if you haven't already. It's so worth it. All three games are spectacular, so it's it's hundred percent worth it, uh, even at full price. Uh, Final Fantasy Legend. Um, so this is I have beaten this one. It's okay. <laughs> um, it's reminiscent of the original Final Fantasy in that you pick your own party at the beginning, except in this, rather than choosing job classes, you're choosing between humans, mutants, monsters, and robots. Or no, wait. This one just has humans, mutants, and monsters. Sorry. So just those three. And you're male or female, that kind of thing. And humans, I think, were better at fighting. Mutants were better at magic, and then, uh, or vice versa, one of the two. And then monsters could eat other monsters and then turn into more powerful things, uh, you know, as the game progressed. It's... My problem with it is that it's like it's like it got a durability thing with your weapons. Um, and that's all three of these, unfortunately. Where you buy a weapon and then it's like... Let's say you buy it, it'll have 50 charges on it. So every time you swing your sword, that's another charge that goes down. So eventually you get to the point where you just got, like, you know, two charges left on a weapon that's taken up an inventory slot, and it's like, oh my god. Like, seriously, it's just it's just annoying and tedious, and I'm just not a fan of it. I would have... If this would have had not that, I would have loved these games so much. But I spent so much time just just hating that, that aspect that it really didn't ruin the experience, but it really, like, made it more forgettable and, and didn't make me as excited to keep going with the series. Um... But I did, I did enjoy it overall. Um, and Final Fantasy Legend 2, kind of same deal. You pick your party at the beginning. This one does have the robots, though. Um, so it's human, mutant, robot, and uh, monster. Uh, and robots, I think, um, the others are the same. But robots, I believe, are dependent on the equipment you give them. Like how strong they are. And the equipment does different things to them. Um, so it's, you know, it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's definitely an interesting game as well. I have not finished this one. This will be next on the list. Um, at some point, so I've played all three of them, but first one's the only one I've finished, so uh, definitely looking forward to getting to that at some point. But again, that durability just, <laughs> you know. Uh, the last one, Final Fantasy Legend 3. Um, the main thing that I like about this is that they took away the, well, not that I like it, but I, I, I appreciate it a little bit more because what they did was made it more story focused. They gave you party members that have names <laughs> and you actually use them and, and go through it and that kind of thing. Um, I believe this still has the equipment durability kind of thing, um, but I think this is the best of the three from what I remember. Again, it's been so long since I've played it, but this one I remember having a story, whereas the other two were very, very bare bones and not much to it. Um, you're just kind of going from point A to point B and, and it's very simplistic. Um, but this one, this one I'm really excited to get to at some point as well. So, uh, yeah. That's it. So that is my Game Boy, Game Boy Color collection. Uh, includes boxed and loose. Um, I honestly would love to get more of these. Um, 
they're super easy to like, if I go to like a convention or something down, like when I go to Retropalooza, that kind of thing, if I'm flying down there and I don't have like a lot of room to, to bring stuff back with me, um, these are great to just be able to pick up and throw in the backpack or the suitcase or something like that because they're so small, especially because most of the ones I get are going to be, you know, boxless. Um, and then I toss them around all over the place. Um, so give me recommendations. Tell me, you know, what, uh, what you think I'm missing. Tell me what I need to play that I haven't played. Thankfully, it's not like my Xbox collection or something like that where, uh, you know, every other game is like, oh, I haven't played it, but it looks cool. Um, so yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, that's my Game Boy, Game Boy Color Collection. Thank you so much for watching. Um, like, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff. You know the drill. And as always, keep on gaming.